And uh, uh, this is just an old song that both Trisha and I have done for a long time in various ways. And uh, I wouldn't really say that it's any specific version of a song. It's just the way we're doing it. Right now. Right now. <laughs> it's the old song, Darling Corey. And we've just sort of picked up the way different people have played it over the years and they've all kind of gotten blended together in some way or another. comments from people on Facebook saying oh. that you are brightening up their days and all sorts of things. We also got, um, can you try turning down the gain just a tiny, tiny bit, just in the very loudest things, there was just the tiniest bit of distortion. Okay. It was probably the thing that we did yesterday to make the, the talking louder. Yeah. Like, it's probably well, uh, we'll, um, maybe I'll just, Maybe I'll just strum my guitar nice and loud here and see if. Yeah, uh, it sounds. It, it really. 
it was just like the tiniest bit. Still distorted? Maybe just a tiny bit. It, it, this also could be Zoom. Just mm -hmm. a Zoom thing happening. Yes, lovely. Okay. Loverly. Very good. Well, what do we do now? I, I guess know. we start, let's, start let's talking. Talk. Let's talk. Um, I'll go first. How about that? Okay. Since we're in Kansas and um, nobody talks much about Kansas, so I'll talk about it briefly. And Howard will help me. It's been so long since we've told these stories. Um, because Didn't just yesterday you tell me it was the sixth most moved from state, state. in the United <laughs> States? Yeah. No, no one wants to live in Kansas. <laughs> but my family did. And um, back in 1850, um, I had a set of, I don't know how many great grandparents they are now, but they left LaRue County, Kentucky, and they were on their way out west and got stuck in a snowstorm up in Leavenworth County and had to weather uh, the snow there. And I guess spring came around and whether the land was cheap or whether they ran out of money or whether they were tired, um, they put uh, their roots down in Douglas County, and my family is still on the same plot of land that was uh, settled upon in 1850. And um, I don't know how many people actually get to say that, that you know you still have family land, but um, my dad is still on the piece of property, and quite honestly, my grandma was just moved from there maybe within the last four years, um, the same place where she gave birth to all of her kids and married my grandpa. And so to kind of give you just a small history of my family, my grandpa was a fiddler from a very young age and who came from a family of musicians. And um, no one was a fiddler. Uh, lots of people played other instruments, but I guess when he said he wanted to play fiddle, his daddy got him a fiddle and my grandpa taught himself how to play. He learned from all of the other musicians in the small area of Big Springs. Um, in case you're wondering where that is, uh, we are all the way over to the east side of Kansas, kind of up at the top and um, right next to Kansas City. And uh, Big Springs is right in between Topeka and Lawrence. And so you can basically, if you live in Big Springs, you can decide to go to Lawrence where the University of Kansas is, or you can go to Topeka where the capital is and it's about the same distance. And so um, my grandpa and grandma, when they were dating, my grandpa said to her, if you want to marry me, you will have to learn how to play guitar. And so my grandma went out to a pawn shop and bought herself a guitar. And in 1946, they were married and started making music together and had three kids, of one of which was my dad. And um, playing music was... Uh, just what we did. Uh, we lived out in the country, they lived out in the country, and I, of course, uh, grew up there, but um, they were farmers. Uh, back at that time, there was not a whole lot of TV watching to be done because where you lived, you couldn't get reception. And so uh, for entertainment, you either made music, um, you might have shot guns and done some hunting, you might have tossed horseshoes, um, or you played cards. Uh, which were was our four things that we love to do and um, so when I was born in 1971 I kind of thought everyone's family did these same things and it wasn't until I went to school and my friends were talking about MTV and the latest videos uh, that were being displayed that I had no idea what they were talking about I wasn't that far behind but my point is is that I didn't I wasn't raised around that and so I um just picked fiddle because uh, why not and uh, by the time you live with people like that you find that somehow you play guitar and you didn't know you learned um, you find out that you can play all these other instruments and sing songs that are just kind of inside of you because um, that's just what's done around you and so that's kind of how I came into it um, there's more about my grandpa probably but uh, you can talk now well uh, I should say that there's a wonderful release of Trisha's grandpa's fiddling on the Field Recorders Collective, and uh, uh, and her dad and um, grandma and some other family members, and also a very young Trisha playing as well. 
-hmm. In fact, I pulled out a couple of records as we kind of go through stuff. Here's an old <laughs> 78 with Trisha's grandpa on it. Can, playing. can we have his name? Oh, oh my, yeah. yeah. My grandpa was Vernon Spencer. And, yep. and yeah, on here on the 78, you can see that he's playing Gold On Slippers. slippers. <laughs> Not golden. Wow. Gold On. <laughs> We, we had a special family version of Gold On Slippers. <laughs> Gold On Slippers. And then here's a cool album that uh, was made in North Dakota that has... Uh, South Dakota. South Dakota. Mm -hmm. That has a young Trisha Spencer, about probably 11 or 12 years old, playing. And her grandpa's on here, too. No generation gap among the fiddlers. Look at that cover. Can't beat that. I love that. Here's the back side of that. I think Trisha is playing the Bill Powell waltz on here, which is one of my favorite waltzes. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, these old albums were made in South Dakota at a, a fiddling, fiddling contest, contest by, by a man named Wilbur Foss, who Trisha knew her whole life, and I got to meet towards the end of his life. And uh, He passed away just a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, as, as with evening goes on, we'll talk a little bit more about how the contest circuit and and um, all of that maybe shaped Midwest fiddling and, of course, shaped my life incredibly about uh, what I was exposed to. And, um, you know, it wasn't until I was an adult that I understood that some people separate old time and bluegrass because uh, growing up in the Midwest, it was just all kind of lumped together and it was called country and western. And so uh, we played old time tunes and we sang country songs and that was just kind of the repertoire that was passed around and passed to me, of course. You, on the other hand, have another little story that's different than mine. Well, I don't I don't really consider my family ever to have been old-time musicians, and I almost don't really consider myself that. I just, uh, but I think that it's important for people to recognize uh, mus broader musical traditions and how those... Um, are within a lot of families and to sort of embrace that and accept that it doesn't have to just be one specific kind of traditional uh form but uh they my family played a lot of instruments and uh definitely the most important one was always the fiddle and the one that uh was kind of the the one that was the most important one that you should learn when you were growing up and doesn't mean anybody was particularly adept at playing the instrument but you were just supposed to play it because the instruments were in our family and uh, they've been passed down for for many generations in fact i've got my fiddle here it was made in dallas texas in 1913 this fiddle was made for my great grandfather and uh, everybody's played it in my family down to me and and of course my son he's got his own fiddle but uh, he does know. like yours he which, does like which mine. he'll probably get you too. yeah mm. and so I think one thing I want to I want to mention is like uh, uh, for some of us who kind of look at music like through a window you kind of think that there are these moments of time and for others of us uh, the time is continual. It's a living tradition, which means some years it looks like this, and some years it looks like this. And even with what Howard and I are doing now, um, I still find it very important to preserve tunes that I learned directly from my grandpa. But I also still find it very important to play the tunes how I would play them and want to share them. And, and I think even with your family of the parlor musicians, uh, your dad would very much say that this is just a continuation of family music, um, mm -hmm. uh, depending on, you know, not, I guess, having a defined of what it is. So it's just a living tradition of traditional music. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so I might have interrupted you. No, I was, I had... I am out of things to say now. Maybe we'll save some other stories. Maybe we should play a fiddle tune. We could do a double fiddle piece if you like. Yeah, yeah. I definitely have some other things to, to say. To say but Me too. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's play a fiddle tune. Do you I want to play? I was just going to ask to hear those beautiful fiddles. Yeah. And uh, while we're showing yeah. tell, this is my grandpa's fiddle. 
Uh, he passed away in 1993. I was a very young woman, and my grandma handed this to me and said, you are the fiddler in the family. Family, This is uh, your fiddle. So uh, my grandpa's fiddle is actually the oldest thing that I can think that has been in my possession for the length amount of time. I can't think of anything else I currently have that I've had longer than this. Um, poor thing, I've done some crazy things to it, but it's still in one piece and I, I love it. And sometimes when I think about my grandpa's hands on here and, and his hands sweating and the way he held it and the way he would show me things, uh, it definitely is a direct connection to him. And uh, It's a powerful fiddle too. Yeah. It is, um, it's, it's a pretty amazing fiddle. My fiddle uh, is, I wouldn't call it exactly a powerhouse or anything, and I, there are moments when I've just hated this fiddle and thought I would look for another one, but I never can find one I like as well as this one. That's, it's a very strange conundrum. Um, what would you like to do? Well, you know, I was thinking that uh, we haven't talked about uh, Dwight yet, so maybe mm -hmm. let's save his tune, unless we want to play no, a Dwight tune. let's save it. Tune. Let's save it. Um, then maybe the Albert Black's tune, just uh, okay. because that's just... Okay, well, uh, so as you know, we are in Kansas, Trisha being from Kansas for many generations, my family being from Texas for many, many generations, as well as Louisiana on my mom's side. But uh, in between us, there is another state called Oklahoma. <laughs> and there is some wonderful fiddling from Oklahoma that really bridges the gap between Texas fiddling and Midwestern fiddling and sort of all other styles too. It's just really, if you dig deep into Oklahoma fiddling, it is amazing. And uh, one of the people that dug deep in Oklahoma fiddling early on was a woman named Marion Thede. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, and she uh, wrote a wonderful book that I think is just called The Fiddle Book. And it has some great great tunes and you just can't say enough about this woman and the important work she did so early on and uh, so we like to play a little tune out of there that we call Albert Black's tune and it's a nice little tune we'll make just play sure, a little bit of it for make you sure our keys are good. Um, uh, since we're talking about some of the things that we uh, might want to impart. I did a fiddle series for Augusta where I taught um, some things to do as a beginner, some things to do as an intermediate fiddler, and then an advanced part. And I think what might be kind of fun is I'm going to second Howard uh, in that same kind of progression um, in case you're wondering what those videos were like. We really appreciated getting to do those and having that kind of work and and as teachers and people who share music, uh, any feedback is welcome, even if it's not the one that uh, mm -hmm. we were looking for, but uh, that might be kind of fun. So we'll play a little bit of Albert Black's tune. Just mm -hmm. start it up. Sure.
Thank you. I have to, I'm, 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 I have give myself the power to mute and unmute so I can do all of the, <laughs> all of the audience is actually doing. Actually, that's really helpful. The hard thing about doing this is the dead silence. <laughs> the dead silence. I know it's, it's so frustrating. <laughs> um, people are loving it. There are so many, um, so many great comments, uh, which I'm going to, I'm going to add, pass on many of them at the end, but, um, one, two things. One is we would love to hear a Vernon Spencer tune. Um, if, if there's one of those that you can share, but yeah. also, um, Brendan Doyle says, Trisha, you need to tell the meat case story. <laughs> and I gotta say, I want to hear whatever the meat case oh, story is. A meat case story is a good story. It's a good story. All right, let's, let's do that. We could do that and segue right into maybe Spotted Pony. And there's oh, two th stories there. I thought you were doing, uh, fat meat and dumplings. Uh, either one. Okay, whatever you want to do is fine. I mean, the, I like spotted, both. the spotted pony gives us a Texas connection again, which okay. is good. So, okay, my grandpa, you kind of get the kind of fiddler he was. Uh, kind of, he was going to go go at it at a very young age. He was going to marry a woman so that he could make music all of his life with her. And um, probably around the, I want to say the 60s is when my grandpa got into contest fiddling. And... Um, I don't, I can't answer or talk about other places in the world, but what kind of happened in the Midwest is like, in, instead of having like festivals or revival festivals, um, uh, fiddlers would just get together at contests and that kind of became the outlet. And um, anyway, by the contest circuit, my grandpa met a lot of amazing fiddlers from the Midwest. And of course I did too. But what also happened is, is my grandpa getting around, he decided that he kind of liked fiddles, not just fiddle tunes, but he liked fiddles. And so he started buying them. And um, by the time I was a fiddler, I could go into my grandpa's gas station because that's what he did. That was his retirement job was that he had a little gas station in Big Springs that, like I said, connected to Topeka and Lawrence. Skelly. Yeah, the Skelly ga uh, Spencer Skelly gas station. And that's where he would spend his days. And so there was always the store fiddle and the store guitar. And then he, he befriended this antique dealer who also lived in Big Springs. And he told this antique dealer, I'll give you 50 bucks. You bring home as many fiddles that you can with 50 bucks. Well, what happened is over the years, my grandpa collected a huge amount of fiddles. And um, inside the Spencer Skelly station, because we were where we were located, my grandpa used to carry um, bologna and cheese and milk for the people in Big Springs so that we didn't have to drive 30 minutes to Topeka or Lawrence. And it was um, housed in this big old school like butcher block meat case uh, roughly I want to <laughs> say like seven feet long you know you can imagine like I think they still have them where you can go sure. in and they're all of these shelves of various food that are kept cool well somehow and I don't know the story of what happened the meat case broke down and instead <laughs> of hauling the meat case out of the gas station my grandpa just started laying out all of his fiddles in the meat case and he collected so many that they were on top of each other. And when I would get off of the school bus, and uh, which I was dropped off at the gas station because my parents worked and they were waiting to pick me up, I would walk in and peer in the meat case and my grandpa would say, pick yourself out a fiddle and try it out today. And I would go around back and dig through there. And you know, they were all in various conditions, some missing strings, some missing necks I mean they you know they weren't all strung up but that's how I picked out my adult fiddle was peering through the meat case and falling in love with one and and that was what I used as an adult until I was given my grandpa's so to let you know how many I'm pretty sure that my grandma counted over 80 fiddles when my grandpa passed away so not only was I given his two best ones the store fiddle and his home fiddle but then I picked out something like 15 others that uh, I thought I could work on them he thought he could work on them too. He could not work on them. He should not have worked on them. <laughs> uh, I, I think I moved it. I think I advanced a little bit further in my luthier skills than he did. Um, but anyway, so that's the meat case full of fiddles and um, lots of great 
folks came through Big Springs to play music with my grandpa, and uh, we might even discuss some of those people that he ran around with later. But. I think we only have two of those fiddles that function in the house now, and they're both excellent, this one and another one, and then about, that's, there's two, that's and then about two or three two more, more out in the mudroom yeah, that, are, still uh, that are not quite put together yet. And I should say that uh, the Spencer Skelly gas station became uh, her dad took it over and it became a hardware store called the Tool Barn and now her brother owns the the Tool Barn and so that's another sort of element of family tradition is is passing down this old gas station which is really one of the last independent hardware stores that I'm aware of. Yeah, I, agree. I don't know of too many hardware stores at all that are independent. They're what even town? the ones in Big Springs. In Big Springs. Big Springs. Yeah, it's the only business, I think. Well, there might be one other business there, but, you know, it's been a running business in Big Springs now and since the 70s. Um, it's some kind of... But the, that is a true dinosaur, an independent hardware store. And uh, so it's nice that they're keeping that going. So while Howard's tuning here, I'll, I'll just tell i um my first contest which is really why i probably started fiddling to begin with um because they kind of hauled me around to these contests but my first one was in 1979 i was eight years old i knew twinkle twinkle little star and go tell aunt molly or something um there were only two contestants but they were placing third three so my grandma was like you should get into that contest, you're guaranteed third. And then I uh, realized though I needed to know one more tune. So before the contest, my grandpa took me out of the side of the camper and he taught me, which one did I not say? Mary had a little lamb or something like that. I think, one you, of, I think you got him flipped. I might, but... yeah. So anyway, I had my three tunes. I got third place. I got 35 silver dollars, a trophy, and some kind of like piece of paper. And from that day on, I was a fiddler. I knew right away. Um, and what that started was this new relationship with my grandpa. And uh, since my grandma might be able to watch this someday, I always never talk enough about her, but she was the one that actually learned how to fiddle to get me started so that then she could push me towards my grandpa who could teach me fiddle tunes. And one of my very first adult fiddle tunes is the one that we're going to play now is um, Spotted Pony. And it's not the D Spotted Pony that many of you are like, oh, yay. Um, this is the <laughs> Spotted Pony in the key of A. It is uh, not that we need to talk about, uh, I guess, lineage of tunes, but it is the Spotted Pony. The, the tune that many of you know that's in the key of D is actually Snowshoes which if you wanted to read the story, we wrote a nice long story about how that happened. But this tune actually came from a woman fiddler in the Kansas City area by the name of Carol Haskell. And uh, Carol did the contest circuit as well. She passed away maybe a year, year ago. ago. Not too long ago. And um, she learned it from her dad, which you can kind of, I forget who all well, of the pieces are. Uh, now, one thing that I have to say about almost every story that I tell is that I'm not a real musicologist or anything, so I, I never really have good sources or anything. It's just all stuff rambling around up in my head. So you may you may write to me and say, you know what, that's not even true. <laughs> but uh, this is the way I remember the story, is that uh, Carol Haskell, well, Trisha learned this from her grandpa, who learned it from Carol Haskell, who learned it from her dad, who learned it from a man named John Wills, who was from Texas, and the father of Bob Wills. So that's where this tune comes from. Spotted Pony in the key of A. And the, the story that of uh, how the tune Snowshoes became Spotted Pony, we wrote in, in our Tiki Parlor release. Uh, called which is, Spotted, it's called Spotted, Spotted Pony. Pony. Yeah. yeah. So. It has a cute little story. I think it's a and wonderful it's, a And it's tune. totally okay. The D version now has earned its Spotted Pony name. Um, don't have any issues with that at all. But in case you want to impress your friends, you can be the one that says, well, actually. Yeah, raise your finger when you say, say it, it at a mm -hmm. session and say, they say, play Spotted Pony in D. Well, actually, actually you got to get the finger up there. And we promise you it will make wonderful, wonderful <laughs> lifelong friends and they'll love you for that. Um, 
so anyway, this was probably my first real adult contest tune um, that I learned needed me from my grandpa. <laughs> to talk about that actually is Howard's guitar playing um I I sometimes I think some people are like don't get enough props <laughs> but you Howard like when we met each other and, and we can be sappy because I told you it does kind of feel like date night and this is as much fun as I've had making music in such a long time but uh Howard and I met about eight years ago matter of fact we had an anniversary on the 31st uh of December so we planned that nicely but we met about eight years ago, and probably one of the things, I mean, Howard was fiddling, obviously, and we were enjoying those tunes, but if I could have just, like, put my grandpa and my dad together into another guitar player, it was Howard. He had already kind of knew how to make that Midwest sound that I was so used to hearing, and I, I've never really told you this, but I think I fell for your guitar playing. <laughs> Before me. <laughs> Well, yeah, I didn't have the four chord down yet, but I, I figured it out. He shook off every four chord for like the first year until one day I think you tried to woo me. So then you're like, I think I'll adopt the four chords. So, uh. <laughs> that, that is the most romantic old time music story. <laughs> Learned the four chord for me. Or he <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that sound that he does, you know, we still make music with my dad. And I, I guess that that's how I hear guitar playing um, to back up these kind of tunes. And I love that bass heavy uh, kind of figuring out which bass note you're going to go to complement whatever's happening with, with the fiddle tune. But I, I love Howard's. Oh, what you got here? Well, I should say that... Um relating to the guitar playing, but when Trisha got a little older, she, you beat your grandpa in a contest. And so uh, that was a big deal. And so her grandpa sent her across the river to study with another old time fiddler who lived in Grantville, Kansas, mm -hmm. named Grantville, Kansas. Amos Chase. And Amos became her mentor for many, many years. And, uh, of course, I was not familiar with Amos Chase at all, but uh, when I met Trisha, I became familiar with his music, and he recorded a couple of albums. And he always played with two guitar players playing the exact same bass runs at, in almost the same way. Uh, Eldon Ray and Glenn Woolaway. And that became sort of what backup guitar 
playing for fiddling became for me. And uh, we've got one of his albums right here. Oh, excuse me. That's Amos, Amos Chase and his old time fiddle. There's Eldon and Glenn with all those trophies that they won. And you can see they got their Gibson guitars there. And this is a fantastic album with some incredible guitar playing. Nothing on the back, <laughs> just the front cover. Oh, wow. I to have a, uh, like a DJ listening party at some point here. <laughs> <laughs> no. We have a we lot have of old time records. records. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm glad you brought, brought up Amos. Amos, uh, you know, there's a, a lot of research that hasn't been done in Kansas, and I feel like it's, it's kind of our thing now. And... Um, uh, we've been fortunate to find some old fiddlers, but man, there are some that people will never know because they didn't make it on uh, other, you know, they just weren't uh, on compilations at all. Well, and they you know. didn't get, uh, the, very little recording was done in Kansas back when field recording was being done. In fact, I think only one woman here in Lawrence was pretty much recorded for the Library of Congress, Congress yeah. and uh, singing songs. Uh, what mostly, was her name? Do you remember? I can't recall at the moment. I'd have to look that up. But uh, they're play party songs. And, um, Hull. Uh, Hull, Hull, right. Hull, yeah. Yeah, our, I, our neighbor's names are Hull, Hull as well. But I can't remember. Her. I have it written down somewhere. Maybe they're related. Did we ever ask them? I don't know. You know I think I did, but I, I think I don't know that they are. Yeah. But uh, this, Go ahead. Well, but uh, we have <laughs> discovered in the past few years with extensive digging we've discovered some really wonderful old time fiddling in kansas and uh unusual unique tunes and um some of them having come from what i consider more of a parlor music tradition i think fit more within that parlor music style which i deeply love uh mm -hmm. polkas shottishes things like that um oh, which one waltzes do you want? Which one do you want to do? no 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 oh, let's, no, no, let's do, the, okay. do the kansas tune okay. so i think we'll play a kansas tune right now we were fortunate to uh, someone found um let's see they were on aluminum disc correct mm -hmm. and uh, they digitized them and this is from a kansas fiddler by the name of burt payne he was born in 1873 he's like my oldest source recordings that i have david barnes is older Oh yeah, I forgot about. Well, we haven't learned any of David's. No, tunes we haven't learned yet. his tunes. Uh, but but, um, uh, Bert had just some am amazing tunes that we had not heard. Like they weren't passed along. Uh, they weren't just versions of tunes that came from you know the Appalachian tradition. They were actually kind of like these their own things. And we did did our homework. Asked people to be like you know what is this like any tune? And several of them stand alone. This one does have some similarities to the Rose in the Mountain. You'll probably hear it once From we John play Salier. it. John Salyer. But uh, to me, it's still just a, a different tune. Um, the, so The tune, uh, did we mention his name? No, I haven't done it yet. It's, it's, uh, the fiddler's name was Burt Payne. He was from Lebanon, Kansas, and uh, which is the geographical center of the continental United States. And um, the tune's called Mississippi Snag Boat. It's one of our favorites, actually, uh, a lot of the Burt Payne tunes are just my absolute favorite tunes. And um, it's, I guess, a cousin tune to Mississippi Sawyer, not melodically, but simply that the Sawyers and the Mississippi were the big old stumps that were sticking up out of the water. And the snag boats would come along and pull those Sawyers out of the water to clear the waterways. So that's how they are related. Let me hear your A. This is another tune that we recorded on our Tiki Parlor release, uh, Spotted Pony, with Brendan Doyle playing the banjo and John Schwab and I doing the Kansas headphones like old Glenn Woolaway and Eldon Ray. 
And uh, it's one of my favorite tunes on that recording. Mm -hmm. Ready? Mm -hmm. California contingent is, is flipping out over that. <laughs> we just got David David Bragger on here. Hi, David. And oh. um, also, and Brendan, Maxine said that Brendan was tuning up his banjo. He got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, does it make me just miss everyone so much. Oh, I'm glad they're here with us tonight, though. But um, there are a lot, there are a lot of people, um, there are a lot of people watching on the Facebook and and everyone was very, was very excited about that tune. Oh, oh good, good. good. And it sounded good. just beautiful. What a great tune. Thank it you. is a wonderful tune, yeah. and he has other ones that are just as great, really. We kind of hope in the next couple of years to put a kind of a compilation with some Kansas fiddlers. Like, I, I think really if anybody thinks that uh, up until about probably seven years ago, you, you could ask, like, hey, do you know any Kansas fiddlers? And everybody would say, no, there's no fiddling in Kansas, you know. Um, so it, it means a great deal to me because obviously there there was fiddling in Kansas, not just with my grandpa, but I mean he learned from some 
you know, great folks that um, played fiddle. And so I, I would really like to be able to give back in the same way of getting some of those tunes out. Howard mentioned that we did run across another fiddler by the name of David Barnes. What a, what a story behind all of that, which we don't have enough time, even if we had spent the whole time talking about David Barnes, but how we came across that music and met the family and um, well, I, that yeah, the David Barnes story is it is a very complex and deep and it took years for us to find his music of years of searching. Yeah. And but we did find it. And it's a really deep story and it's wonderful. However, there's another story that uh, very recently I was basically going through and kind of clearing out our CDs. We were clearing out our basement. And I found a package that was unopened, and I was like, who sent us a CD, you know? And we didn't even open it, you know? And so I opened it up and realized that someone had sent us these recordings from the 60s. And, I mean, this was literally just a couple of weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. We still have uh, more research to do. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and it was a Kansas fiddler recorded back in the 1960s. And I said, hmm, well, this is really interesting. And... There was a phone number on the CD, and uh, I played the CD, and I was just blown away by this incredible parlor music. Once again, not uh, not your hard drive and um, necessarily hoedown music, but just gorgeous parlor music, which for me uh, really rings my bell. And um, and actually, I kind of I forgot about the phone number and everything and I called it today actually I didn't, I didn't tell you, you that no. yeah I called it today but I didn't get an answer so I'm gonna more more, more to, to be revealed I yes. guess um are we gonna do a song I, well yeah, yeah like I'm to. not sure where we're at on uh, time what time and... do we need to wrap up here well um I would love to I would look I mean we I think everybody wants to hear a little more music from y'all um okay. and then and then I'll ask some of I'll, um give you some of the comments and questions that have come in okay that, um uh and see if that sparks anything but and then but i definitely we definitely want to hear another thing so why don't you all okay another song and then we'll transition to question and answer uh you don't even have your capo oh or you're in the capo in the right place okay right yeah. so one thing that i um have been thinking a lot about lately and and particularly over the pandemic is that i know in my family Part of what was important was actually writing your own music, making up your own songs. And this went back to my grandfather, who also wrote incredible short stories and things like that, these very fantastical short stories, which are another deep well that's almost too, too deep to go into right now. But uh, my dad and his sisters wrote songs, and they were uh, really nice. And and um, Trisha's dad writes wonderful banjo tunes. And I, I think that sometimes people overlook the fact that original music is an important aspect of all of this. And uh, well, everything was original at one time. At some point, it was original. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we've been writing some songs and. Uh, this is one that we came up with that we were hoping to release sometime in 2021. And uh, certainly references the state of the world. And I tend to be the more pessimistic of the two of us. And that's apparent in maybe the first few verses. And then Trisha wrote the last verse, which is far more optimistic in fact we were just discussing over coffee how how she's more optimistic generally but uh, we need f folks like that around I guess feel like you're in tune yeah yeah uh we haven't really performed this before well we we did a while back and then we we kind of shelved everything. it and changed it a little bit and yeah a uh, song's called Babylon. I hear a kid coming out. Hey, we're almost done. Okay, be quiet. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> i 
crumbling down is tumbling down Babylon is crumbling down is tumbling down All the king's horses and all the king's men Couldn't put Babylon together commented in on the Facebook and said and reminded us all that Trisha is the Kansas State fiddling champion. Is this the truth? That yeah. is true. For two years straight, <laughs> yeah. because they didn't have the contest last year. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, and that, that transitions to one question that came in. Where, where were the fiddle contests typically held? Was there like a state fair or a... Um, well, they were they were at, almost at one time in the '70s and '80s. Almost every town had some kind of contest that they put on. Uh, it, it was just the social gathering. So in the summers, uh, as most of us now uh, put festivals on our calendar, uh, those those fiddlers had all of these contest circuit. It was just a you know circuit that you could go to, and. Um, you know, some of that still goes on in Texas, but as far as I know, almost all of the fiddling contest is pretty much gone, except maybe for Whoa. a couple that are still held here in Kansas. Well, there's still plenty in Missouri, though. That is true. Missouri still has held on to their contest mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they do. Yep. And but, do uh, fiddlers tend to cross over between Missouri and Kansas for those, for those yeah. contests? Yeah, and you know, that's mainly how I grew up. We didn't even get to this in our talking, but I grew up among those great Kansas and Missouri fiddlers, Iowa fiddlers. Um, uh, Dwight Lamb was one of my mentors. I, uh, Pete McMahon, uh, Sarah Stinnett, all of those folks were in the same 
little group that my grandpa was in. Now, my grandpa was not the same caliber of fiddle fiddler as many of them. Um, but he had his own style. Had and his it own was, style. It was definitely rich in its own way. Yeah. We got another another album here. This is Dwight's album. Oh, yes. Old-time fiddling left-handed style. And he's playing with Elvin Campbell on the guitar here. And this is just an incredible album. Uh, and that is some guitar playing that really, I listened to this for about two years straight, nothing but this album, and learned to play guitar from it. You know, if you're, oh, if you're interested in this and want to know about this kind of fiddling, really, Charlie Walden has pretty much put it all together for the state of Kansas as well. And he's, he's got some archives up of some people who I grew up with and um, has done an incredible job making sure that the preservation has stayed stayed there for anybody who wants to go and listen, as well as what he's making and adding to the tradition even of his own. So mm -hmm. um, hopefully Absolutely. That... Is, my dad's on here. Dad, is that, or maybe you know, what the, his website is Missouri Old Time Fiddle or something? It's something like that. Uh, oh, no. Dad, Dad's too lazy I, to I'm get sure it he's made it easy it for you chat. to find it. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it's not hard to find Charlie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not hard to find Charlie. Yeah, uh, I gotta say that you know we 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 were uh, slated to have you guys up for our October, uh, October. and, uh, and uh, man, we're so excited to have you guys. Up. Um, um, where's the, I don't know where the chat is. Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. There, there is a just go just go to charliewalden.com. You'll find everything. All the Missouri, All the Missouri fiddling stuff. stuff. Well, there is a Missouri fiddling, Missouri old time fiddlers website, but I don't know what it is. But if you go to charliewalden.com, he has links to everything. Okay, okay. thanks, Dad. Dad. I appreciate okay. it. Sorry, I knew I knew that by mistake. You should meet again, <laughs> Dad. Yeah. Um, no, that was great. Well, you know, we had this new concept working with coordinator Rachel Eddy. Um, that there would be different regions represented within the the learning that happened here north central southern appalachia uh, the midwest and uh man god willing and the creek don't rise we'd love to have you come up for next october uh this session has been wonderful it's been a real eye opener to me i'm an outlier for old time music i'm a learner myself um but just in listening to the way you guys are able to speak about it and speak about the community that created it is uh, just been a real eye opener. Before Emily gets back to the chat, there was one question that I had the, the, in listening to you guys. Um, I've always been um, a little bit envious of, of musical families. Uh, music skipped a generation in my family. So my grandparents were musicians. My parents were not, uh, but I had wondered, like, when you're when you were playing a tune, did it ever morph into the Spencer rendition or the Reigns rendition of the of the songs? Is there any signifiers within the family that came about when you're jamming? I I don't know. To me, that just happens when you play the tune. You know that I I think. It, it's sort of it's a two-way street you know you kind of you try and learn things as best you can from some deeper traditional well and then they naturally become your own and there's really nothing you can do about that you know even if you try to stop it it, it just happens anyway we didn't get to this aspect of it but you know howard and i have four kids between us and um uh, you you could spend hours talking about traditional music and where you got it and who you pass it on to. But, you know, with our own kids, because they hear us play, they have this already built in language, whether they want it or not. You know, they hum things that they have heard over and over. So it's all in there. It's just whether or not they let it go out. Um, and even if they do let it go out, I really just think that you can't help but let it become its own thing, even though 
you've heard it a certain way. It's just because we all have different technical abilities. Uh, maybe we have different ears. Um, I, I see it in our kids. Some of them, they can execute but then they just take it another step and they, they don't really think about what they're doing. They're just making music. And that's what I encourage anybody to do. Just make some music. You do, you kind of have to have, I think some forethought of what you're learning, but you know, um, whether you mean to or not, you're probably going to change it a bit. Um, so I don't know if that answers your question at all. No, it, 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 we could talk for hours about this yeah. subject. Uh, and hopefully next October we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get to. Yeah. Uh, thanks for indulging. Jesse, my husband, Jesse, who some of you on the chat know, Jesse Milnes, um, he, he was just saying yesterday that his, when he was learning to play the fiddle, his sister, who did not play any instruments, didn't take up any instruments, um, would correct him. She would, she had all the tunes in her head and she'd say, <laughs> oh no, that note, that note isn't right. You gotta, that's not quite the right one. <laughs> of course, I just loved that. As a yeah. <laughs> that's actually me with her sometimes because I don't play a lot of her tunes and she'll pick one up and play it and I'll say, oh, you got a little note wrong there. It makes Good. me kind of yeah. angry. I know, I so shouldn't I, do that. So I just say, you know, I do a lot of variations. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't know this variation. <laughs> Okay, I got a couple more questions for you. Okay, Trisha, what was the family card game? We already, there was much speculation oh. over how good you are at horseshoes in the chat, but um, which we, we all assume very good. Um, but I'm curious about the, the card game too. Well, I should say that mm -hmm. I won't say what it is. I'll let you talk about that, but we still play the card game. We play the card we game. We play the card game several nights a week if and and everybody loves it um i will say that our family was cool way before the obamas were cool because <laughs> they play it too they play it too so i might come from a family that plays pitch 13 point pitch so pitch. yeah is that is that related to uh another game or no it's just pitch is it's the thing i think so i okay. you know i, I yeah i'm excited we, yeah, it was a quite a big. Uh, we'd have big old family tournaments, and so we passed that on to our kids. Which we is love fun. playing. Pitch. It's fun to play. So that's great. I'm really excited. Um, my, uh, I've played many a game of euchre with, um, with some other Midwesterners. So I was curious if it was. Ah. There is, you know. I don't. But, I don't hey, know that one. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna look it up and learn how to play it. <laughs> that's great. Okay. Um. Let's see. There was several comments. It's Facebook is making it difficult for me to scroll back. There were so many comments. You guys should will probably just want to read through them on the Facebook later. But um, that it's not letting me scroll back to the very beginning. But there was um, Brandon had mentioned uh, remembering that record that you the first record that you showed us and uh, Wilbur Wilbur Foss was that mm -hmm. the name? Yeah. Um, that uh, as a as a winner. Yes. Yeah that one which is great um and also there was a little bit of mention and i i wanted to say two things one is um there's there was a bunch of mention of otap in the chat which i think is old time accompaniment pattern pattern, pattern. pattern. okay yes. yeah. i was i yes i wanted to make sure i i was like uh wanted to make sure that we clarified that for anyone who was uh not sure coming in on this cold I want to make sure that uh, just a reminder that the old time accompaniment pattern is the refined way of saying Missouri rules. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same. We're Got not it. from Missouri, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I see. <laughs> That's what but the kids would say. I, I will say R.P. Christensen coined that. So I don't, uh, Char I tried to talk to Charlie about how the whole Missouri rules came about. I can't remember the story he told me, but I know RP said that many, many years ago. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep plugging the OTAP there. I, I think uh, Charlie came up with, uh, with Missouri, Missouri rules. rules. I think, I, I, but I think I that's what he said. Yeah. But it definitely came after the fact of RP's, the old time accompaniment pattern. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I wanted to say that, um, 
for anyone interested, uh, Trisha mentioned that she did a, a series of three lessons for the Augusta winter sessions on fiddle and Howard does three on um, old time guitar. Would I be mistaken in saying that you probably mention these accompaniment patterns in these I lessons? do. And yeah, and a lot of the way I play now is based on the guitar players on those albums I just showed, uh, Elvin Campbell, uh, Eldon Ray, and Glenn Woolaway. And Trisha's dad. Wonderful. And also someone linked in the Facebook comments to um, your Patreon, which also Trisha and Howard have been doing various uh, Patreon things during this pandemic. So I encourage you to check that out. And you can really find out a lot on spencerandreigns.com. There's a lot of um, links to various projects and images of art and fun things like that. Um, okay, so I think I think that is all of the questions that came in. If anybody else has a question, burning question, that they want to jump in, um, I would love to ask you guys to play us out with one more song, if it's not yeah. too much to ask, uh, uh, one more song or tune. And if anyone has a burning question while they're getting ready, I will um, relay that. But most of this is people are saying... Um, here in the here in the Zoom, Nell, Karen Greedy, and Nels Diller are listening from Wisconsin and loving it. We have Bev and Jack Osborne are listening, and thank you very much for the concert. Um, many Plum and Mike uh, Clavarius, fabulous. Um, a lot of people. Everyone just loves it. We were I was laughing when you were talking about the. Uh, Kansas being the sixth most uh, popular state to leave. Uh, we have not one, not two, but three, four Kansas expats <laughs> on this <laughs> call right now. Um, me, my dad, and my aunt and uncle. <laughs> I'm one of the few people I know who moved to Kansas. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like West Virginia, we're in the same boat. We can, uh, I also moved to a much moved away from state, so I feel like I can okay well um a couple of fiddlers who are really important to us today and uh we haven't been able to see them in a while are from iowa one is uh the great fiddler al murphy who's uh i, I don't always think gets enough props but that man is an amazing fiddler with an incredible knowledge of fiddling and the other is dwight lamb who also has an encyclopedic knowledge of fiddling and learned the uh, accordion tunes from his grandfather who immigrated from Denmark. Now, I was learning a lot of these tunes on the accordion, but I've kind of developed a hand injury and haven't been playing the accordion as much, so I've been moving them to the fiddle. Trish has been playing them on fiddle for a long time, and I've been recently trying to learn them on the harmonica because they lay out the same way on the harmonica. But we're gonna play uh, one of Dwight's accordion tunes. And very few of these tunes have titles. Uh, a lot of the titles were just kind of um, made up by Christian Buga, the great fiddler from Denmark, Copenhagen, Denmark, who uh, learned a great number of these tunes and, and wrote a book and recorded a couple of albums with Dwight, um, but, but wrote a lot of these tunes out. So we're going to play one that everybody seems to refer to as the Crooked Waltz. And Seth and Emily, thank you. Thank you both so much for making this happen when Rachel approached us about it. Um, I have to say that uh, some of the online line stuff has been kind of difficult to pull off, um, especially if you're uh, musicians who like to do things live. But boy, do we appreciate the opportunity to keep doing what we love to do and sharing it with people. And we know that it takes a lot of people behind the scenes to make it happen. So thank you for doing that and putting this together so that we could, we could be here in Kansas and at least share what we're doing with all of you. So thank you. Wonderful. And let me just say before uh, before you guys start, um, well, thank you. We, we really appreciate you doing this. And also, um, 
for folks watching on the Zoom and on the Facebook, um, we're putting the link to a, sur um, a survey from the West Virginia Humanities Council who is generously providing um, some funding to support this series. And so it would be helpful to them um, and to us if you could fill that out and just, um, it helps them with their funding and it helps us with ours as well. So just a quick survey and the link will appear in the chat momentarily if it hasn't already. Okay, thank you. Thanks. All right, here's a little bit of the... A little bit of the Crooked Waltz from Dwight Land. Trisha and Howard and to everyone joining us on the Zoom and on Facebook. Um, I hope you all are having a wonderful start to your new year. And is there anything I've forgotten to say, Seth? Just that we'd like to thank everybody for coming out. We'd like to thank uh, the West Virginia Department of Arts, Culture, and History, the National Endowment for the Arts, the West Virginia Humanities Council, and Davis Elkins College for their sponsorship. We'd love to thank everybody that donated uh, this year. It really has helped us uh, continually uh, provide pro programming throughout the pandemic. We will continue to provide programming uh, by any means possible throughout this uh, turbulent time. And we are planning a vibrant in-person gathering this summer. It is our hope and prayer that we'll all be vaccinated and get shots in our arms and be able to hold hands and dance and be face to face and knee to knee once again. Uh, Trish and Howard, thank you so very much for um, being with us this evening. Um, I, I wish we could have been together during October, um, but thanks for making this pivot with us into virtual realm. And then hopefully by next October, uh, you guys could come and be the Midwest representation for old time music at our October old time week. Wonderful, Graceland. Have you guys ever been to uh, an October Old Time Week before? No, we haven't, no. but okay. we're looking forward to it. Oh, man. Well, how does playing old time music all night in a Victorian mansion sound? It's pretty, pretty good. Pretty lovely. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty magical experience. 
being close to anybody in any musical situation just sounds amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I attended a band rehearsal the other day from like 20 feet away and I heard three songs live and felt like I was just given a million dollar show. Wow. It, I, mean, I cannot wait. I absolutely cannot wait. Um, thank you guys for, for coming. Uh, for those of you that are Winter Sessions members, if you'd like to watch this again, we'll put it up in the uh, uh, January event archives. Um, so you, you can find it there. Um, we'll make short work of that probably sometime tomorrow. Um, thank you guys so very much. Uh, Emily, I don't know. That about wraps it up for I my I think it end. does. We're going to say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> Bye. So great to Bye. see you, great to see you. after later events. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Happy New Year. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Au revoir. Bye. Thank you.